Hello everyone and a good evening and assalamualaikum to everyone who's basically live with me at the moment in Pakistan. It's really amazing to be a part of this youth um, international conclave sessions, I guess. So um, it's amazing to be in here, especially in this um, crisis these days. I think I obviously hope everyone is doing really well and keeping well as well, stay healthy. And uh, it's amazing to be in this platform together, even though with a lot of limitations. So um, this is a bit of disclaimer. My name is Agita Pasaribu, and I am the founder and the CEO of Bullied App. What we do is uh, we are providing a platform for people to look for a psychologist and a lawyers in one integrated app. We are utilizing an artificial intelligence so that we would like to portray a transparency for everyone who seek for help before they're actually getting the relevant support for them. So um, at the moment, the startup is actually based in the UK. However, that I also running a charity under the same principle. So we are providing a free online platform um, to provide emotional support and a legal knowledge support during this quarantine in Indonesia. So you can simply go to www.bullyid.org. So let's begin with our conversation tonight. Basically, um, as I mentioned earlier, I, I am not a licensed psychologist. My background is a cyber law. And um, academically, I studied law as well, criminal law. So obviously, uh, whatever that I'm going to share with you tonight, it's basically based on my own experience and throughout the journey as an entrepreneur and as a social entrepreneur as well. So obviously, these days, it's a lot of things that happen in our life, the way we live, the way we um communicate with people and the way we meeting other people everything is gone online obviously it's also affecting our lifestyle it's also affecting the way our business working and the way we negotiate with our clients our suppliers or probably with our investors and this is obviously an unprecedented time for everyone but we are all in the same boat so if you feel stress if you feel a little bit of anxiety if you feel probably helpless we're all in the same boat we're all feeling the same thing and when it comes to emotional resilience this is something that it's really really important as we know as uh, probably all of you is the startup founders or running your own startup at the moment obviously there's a lot of things that we have to consider um, when it comes to COVID-19. But the first, first thing, we are actually the one who's basically have to control ourselves as a founder and um, as a, probably the CEO of the company. This is really crucial time for us to be able to acknowledge our own stress. Um, it's good to be able to basically experiencing some kind of like a stressful or helpless feeling because it actually shows that we are quite a functions in this uh, during this time. But the best thing what we can do is basically to acknowledge and noticing what kind of stress that we have. Either what kind of stress that you are right now, either you have to pay a rent or either you have to think about your suppliers or even you have to think about um, your financial obligations. So making sure that you can take your journal and then write down what kind of stress that you're actually really focusing at the moment so based on that you have to understand something that this is not you or this is not your investors but this is because of the crisis and remember that crisis will go um this is not a permanent thing and this is a temporary so after you acknowledging and after you noticing about the stress that you have, we are going forward to mitigating the stress. And how are we going to do it? Obviously, in the 
in the moment when you've been working from home and then just a lot of things changes, you probably have to meet with your clients through online. But it's always okay to sort of kind of like mitigating your stress. We're taking some time, a time to break. So focus on the things that completely take out yourself from a job. If you be able to psychologically, you know, detach yourself from your work, it's really helpful for yourself, especially for us in a daily basis. Um, you know, during a working from home, normally you probably go into your office or you go into a co-working space, you spend nine to five, uh, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and then you're going back home and you meet your family or your loved ones. But now since we're working from home, everything, it seems just like you're working 24 hours. You're having your breakfast in front of the computer, you're replying email, you're having lunch in your computer. Even before you sleep, you're gonna still checking your, your phone on your email. So um, it's really, really important to mitigate the stress because the moment when you're not being able to detach yourself completely from the work, that's the moment when you're not being able to cope up and focus what to do next. So probably this is also the best time. Um, obviously, this is not really, really the best time to kind of like detaching ourselves to completely um focusing for ourselves but this is the opportunity that we can do and we can uh, focus to also think about our own um, personal mental health and well-being if you happen to go to counseling this is actually good for your own personal productivity and um, this is exactly the best time for you to spend time with your family to talk with your loved ones and um, it is also very benefit if you able to look for a different time and different kind of like hobbies so um, either you are probably with your families um, trying to do some different kind of like you know hobbies and start cooking or um, looking for different value you could probably start of you know starting your day of listening some TEDx talk um, that could bring new value new added value for you or some kind of like a very good and very mindful podcast one of um one of my my favorite podcasts i can say it's a mind valley so if you are on spotify you can look for them they're great they really have amazing contents and it can really make your brains open up and um, see the diversity about like work in a different um, part of the world. So it's good to kind of like mitigating the stress by going for kind of like a different recovery activities. But what next after that? So it's always good that you could seek for support. So seek for support in here and looking for support, it doesn't mean that you are actually showing some kind of like a weakness. Seek of support, it could be coming from your friends, from your relatives, even for your employees, colleagues, your investor probably, or even your um, clients. So seek for support in here, it could be in a very different way. And, you know, sometimes when you have an investor or you have a mentor, they are way have more experience than you. So it's good to kind of like bringing and listening to the value that they have and then what kind of advice they have in this very unprecedented time. Um, it's always good to open up a discussions and um, listen to other people what kind of um, idea that they have in mind. So sick of support in here, it could be also from the governments if in the country there is some kind of like a loan or a grant that is available so apply for that and um, there's nothing really wrong to seek for help and seek us for support as well so this is this is exactly the time when everyone right now is having the same difficulties the same challenge so it's easy to actually reach out to anyone as well because everyone is actually staying at home and probably everyone is also have some time to look for their phone reach out someone from LinkedIn, it's really benefit um, for everyone who's basically in the professionals. So if you haven't 
focus on building your own personal online and personal branding, this is exactly the time. Normally, majority of the CEOs or um, companies or probably a founders, they're not really focusing on building their own personal branding. On the other hand, things like this is a very unprecedented. Normally, you probably focus on reaching out people and um, in the sense of how we're going to be able to look for someone who focused on doing our sales or um, as our financial um, or our CFO. But this is exactly the time that you to do an online branding <clears throat> because everyone right now online. So public branding, it's equally, equally, really, really important. Um, one of the reason is because people not only see your service and product, but people actually see you. And LinkedIn is one of the best platform to do that. So um, if you never accept any online webinar, for example, um, to speak and to share about your experience or your stories, so do that, start doing that. And um, it's actually good for your personal branding in the same time it's your own brand. So seek for help and seek for support. The next one is improvise and regain control. <clears throat> so there are two things in this aspect. Improvising, improvising your business and improvising yourself in the same time. Improvising business in here is um, the way how can you provide a different product or a different service or a different technology or a different system or probably a different management. So improvising in here, it could be helping you in really many, many ways. Why I'm focusing on here, because we have no idea until today, there is no vaccines that um, basically able to cure the whole this coronavirus. So we really have no idea when all of these things is going back as a normal. If you are, if your business and your main core product is basically tangible or something that um, people have to go outside and to buy that, maybe it's it's good. And this is a time that you can have a pivot, you can have discussions with your team. Think about the way how people can reach out your service through online. It could be management, it could be, um, you know, implementing a different technology in here utilizing blockchain or artificial intelligence utilizing mobile app it could be really many many ways but this is really important for you to improvise your business model and to also cutting a budget that it's not ne really necessary in this time like this we realize that if normally that you are way focusing the thing and to spend your budget uh, for a center, you know, a building in the in the middle of the center of the city, then probably this is something that you can cut off from the budget, right? So, um, one thing about the rental, another thing about the salary of the your employees, um, it could be something related to the service about the internet as well, because you're no longer at the office. But what are the stuff that you basically can be able to give it to your employees? Another benefit that it also can help them to um boost their productivity while working from home and um, obviously there are a lot of things that you can improvise when it comes to business in this aspect and it's really really important that you can manage with improvising your own self as i mentioned earlier which is very much related improvising yourself in here when it comes to investing to your own um core value um in terms of your own uh, basically personal branding second it could be a, a skills and these two is actually really hand go hand in hand um as a as a founder right now when people is basically looking for the product or the service the first thing they will do is checking online so the moment that um you can present yourself better online is actually boost up your products um publicity and uh, and real promotions at the same time. The last thing, so let me a bit recall from the beginning, we have acknowledging your stress or noticing your stress. 
and then you have to mitigating your stress you seek for support and you improvise and regain control afterwards and the last thing is have a long-term view um this is really important when it comes to business especially we know that if you are working in the tech startup or telehealth legal tech industry you're good to go because you're already transferring everything through online however things are completely changes as well so for example um back then people was not really aware about gdpr or data privacy and some of the country are does not really have any any kind of this policy since everything is about the coronavirus hitting us really hard majority of the country right now uh promoting about their own tracking applications especially for coronavirus and a citizens right now is really really active when it comes to knowing their own rights knowing what uh where their data is actually being sent being analyzed and being utilized in the same time so there is a chance that probably the country or the government will consider to adapt the gdpr if or industry is already working with the online it would be really benefit for you to also consider making sure that your app it's gdpr compliance making sure that your app it's basically providing a terms and conditions for your um visitors or for your clients so you know your client better and then this is the right time to basically being transferring for your client and when i'm talking about the long term view in here we know that um technology is basically running so fast there are a lot of people out there is working for the aspect of artificial intelligence um and ai itself it's not just focusing on the it itself ai for the marketing there's an ai for medical industry ai for education this is the best time for all the standard founders or the entrepreneurs to basically collaborate and being open minded with um everyone so we know that our business is basically we're not going to be able to stand alone and this is um the time for you to also kind of like open up your perspective when it comes to collaborations when it comes to uh merging with different startup founders and basically coming up with uh merging with probably merging a, a product in the future so uh, this is obviously something that you could take a look obviously covid-19 it is not something that we have to um to be afraid of we know that this is this crisis is going to uh this going to it's it's not a permanent thing it's a temporary and uh, we have to believe that as a stand up i guess um this is my last statement so hopefully um there's something that you can learn i am happy to answer if there's any questions um from my end i believe that um we have to put so much value for a founders and for the ceo why i'm talking about the value in here because um when we are building a company it's not only us there is employees there is an investors there is clients as well it is important that we understand in this unprecedented time we would like to make sure and to work together collaboratively um to make sure that we basically going to get and achieve our own main goal and by doing that we have to be open and then making sure that we not undervalue our own um spirit you know our own um individual majority of the founders in this crisis like this they just going to sell their service just you know in in a very cheap price and um and basically they just want to make sure that there is a business running but the key thing about business is basically yourself and your service the moment that you be able to make and sure and you be able to basically um providing the statement to your clients that you and your product is basically able to support 
um, your your bias and for their for their own company in the same time. So I guess, um, yeah, I guess in the in the last last statement, basically uh, we all need to kind of like work together in this unprecedented time, and and um, it's important for us to to stay sane and to stay healthy, and then by the by meaning in here is basically to balance our own mental health and that's really really important so it is not always about productivity in this time like this but it's also about our own health and because the moment that we are losing our health is obviously there's nothing that we can um we can do afterwards so i hope that's um yes so um yeah i hope that's basically helping and i hope that's some kind of like a short advice it could boost up our productivity and um oh there's a question um how can we support the people in the situation around us who are facing stress in the current situations obviously support it could be um coming from either people by the one who basically we are giving a sort of kind of motivations to the person. It could be um, support in terms of our own knowledge. It could be support if you have something a financial that you can support. And it could be something about your energy and, um, you know, that's your presence, basically. So support, it can be really, really various. But in this time, what I'm really saying is don't... Um, don't be stingy to uh you know help each other because we really have no idea probably this help is going to help us in the future so if you can if you basically not being able to help anyone by money your time is valuable so you can support someone by your time by your knowledge by your energy by your value it could be really a lot of things that you can support from someone sometimes money itself it doesn't really helpful if the person is actually require even your skill or your own knowledge so you can share everything and you can support someone based on those things as well so it doesn't really mean that support it has to be money if you're able to help someone to create a proposal for example it could be really um, helpful for them um Another question is, current situation has changed the behavior of people. Sometimes there's that panic, even sometimes we ourselves, nothing seems good. Uh, and the mood swings is a major issue nowadays, fight between siblings. That's true. 94% um, people obviously experiencing the very difficulties um, during working from home. There's a lot of challenges that we are you know experiencing because we bringing our lifestyle at home we normally used to go out and then we're going back and then we have our own daily activities schedule one is basically outside and one inside at the moment we have to merge everything on the household and probably sharing responsibilities for those who's married probably have to take care of the children together of course there's a lot of things and is a is a mood swings because you have to kind of like think about everything at the same time but something that i can really suggest is when you have to bring your work at home and you have to make it just like this is your own home so you're working nine to five and making sure that you're not working afterwards so normally if you're working nine to five at work so do nine to five at at home at the same time making sure that you always have time for yourself, for your family, so everything is basically just like a normal. So try to adapt how you normally work, um, like, a, like a normal, and then you basically adapt it in uh, at these situations. Um, we cannot deny that the mood swings and, um, you know, and probably some kind of like conversations between families and um, probably for those who have the kids, and it's it's really difficult to uh, sort of kind of like manage the way you can dealing with your clients and in the same time you have to deal with your family at the same time but that's the beauty about it you know so take it as um take this opportunity to probably 
engage more with your family and to know better about your loved ones in the same time. If normally you spend time more with your colleagues at the office, and probably this is the, the best time for you to understand better who are your your kids' friends online. And um, so then you can also spot something if something wrong with your kids, you know, if your kids is getting cyber bullied, for example, if your kids is basically speaking with the strangers online. So um, it's um, taking this as an opportunity to, you know, always see the positivity behind everything. And when it comes to business, um, I probably have some kind of like a, you know, negotiation tips during this um, during this time. Of course, it's difficult to not being able to see um, a body language you know, during this, um, you know, meeting probably through online uh, video call. And obviously, it's not an easy thing to negotiate in terms of pricing or in terms of uh, proposals through online. Um, but what you can do is building your personal um, your personal relationship with your client even through online. So it doesn't mean that you have to keep checking on them on WhatsApp and asking them how they're doing. But you can also add them and maybe follow them and get connected with them on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is like one of the safest place to get connected with your with your professionals, colleagues, or um, clients so get connected with those um, through LinkedIn and then whenever they're basically posting or if there's anything that interests with them try to engage with them it's also good things to understand um, how your clients basically react on something so then you can you can get a kind of like a you know a cheating shit uh, notings what which one is basically what's your clients or perspective and what they like um, I see another question, CS Sajat Jafid. How you persuade people to accept your point of view? I mean, convincing people's mind. Yes, you're right. So um, this is one of the most, I think, uh, difficult things to do, especially online, how to convince people. But <clears throat> instead of we as founders, we're basically asking or presenting this is our product a b c d e why don't you start asking your client or your potential client what can we do more for you and what do you need what kind of things that you are required at the moment and how can i make your um task easier you know so stuff like that and um this is really important because the moment when you asking them you can adjust yourself and you probably can have time to think about connecting what kind of service and the products that you have and this also help you and probably if you need to emphasize something in your business model or your services line or your products and this is will definitely will help you in the long run so ask your clients basically how can you help them more so instead of basically um, providing more details about your company try try the other way around the other thing also work together with your client the way how you convince someone it's basically how you be able to make your position not as a buyer and seller but as a partner you know that you and your product is very valuable that being able to basically support your buyer companies or business so portray yourself as how you how do you want your client to be success and obviously all the startup founders and all the business um you know the business person they want their products to be sold and they want some productivity in their management you know efficiency and transparency so work together with them as a partner compared to as a buyers and sellers. The other thing, um, this is actually more into like a negotiation skills. The moment when you speak, I listened more to your partner or to your um, buyer or you know, basically to your buyer. Listen more to them. And then if it's important, probably at silent, okay? 
So when you negotiate something, um, you may add just a silent if you are dealing with someone, probably like, well, I've been working with you for over a few years at that moment. So this is the price that uh, we can do. You know, you can add silence on that until they actually can think about it. So give someone time to think. And um, of course, you have to do your research before that. So um, I think those three, it could be really um, helpful for helping you to convince people and how to negotiate even though with so many limitations these days. Any other questions? Hamid Dar, I'm working hourly for seven to eight hours daily on a laptop during the whole lockdown. I'm having a subconscious mind state at the start of the day and need to settle up myself for two or two hours in the start of the day. This thing's making me anxious that maybe I'm hurting my health or losing my strength. So what would be your opinion to it? Does online working affect mental health and growth or be your personal growth in this order? Okay. Um, when it comes to working online, as I mentioned earlier, basically uh, we tend to we tend to work the whole day. We tend to work like twenty four hours the moment when we are working from home, especially when we are online, because we tend to check um, we tend to check our phone. We tend to check which emails is actually popped up. There is always a long run effects when it comes to psychologically too much detection with your work so that's why if you were with me in the beginning i always say is about the the path number two is mitigating the stress so it's really important that you have something to recover your activities always making time for example if you have to work for seven to Eight, eight hours per day so just focus on that and if you have to take a break during a lunch break please just do your lunch break without checking your email without checking your um instagram or any social media enjoy your food or probably have a conversation with someone at your home or maybe check in with your family up there so um focus on the work in allocated time right so as i mentioned so adapt the way how you normally work at the office but if it's if it has to be it at home but it has to be following your normal working hours um the effects for this is basically could be really various when it comes to a mental health so it could be really workaholic and it could be really having insomnia and anxiety there are some people having um imposter descent um, syndrome as well so imposter syndrome basically is someone who's always feel that um you know you are less compared to someone else and this is could be this is could be really various of kind of like a mental health symptoms that could come up but what i could really suggest is you have to really just focus on your work in your allocated time and making sure that you have a well-balanced life between your work and your um your own activities with yourself um even during this online um sorry even during this working from home time i guess that's all the questions if i don't have any other questions i would like to just make a final note yeah, I believe so. There's no other questions this time. So um, I would really say, um, I would like to really say thank you so much for Youth International Conclave for providing me the platform and how basically I'll be able to sharing uh, the five way to build up the emotional resilience during um, this COVID-19 pandemic. So for all the startup founders, fellows out there, it is okay to feel stress. It means we are functionals and we are basically, um, you know, we are basically human this time. Don't forget to acknowledging and noticing our stress, starting making a journal and then knowing which one that you have to do, uh, mitigating your stress, 
seek support, speak to someone, and then um, it doesn't mean that you're basically showing your weakness. Improvise, improvise, and regain control. It's okay to probably before this you keep you know on and on and on and on, and um, you know you probably forgot to look back and then pause a little bit and then to think what are the things that is missing between while you are developing your company. So it takes this time to basically improvise and think about different services, products, um, management of stuff, or probably looking for different investors or different partners. So improvise your business and at the same time improvise your personal and your network. So this is exactly the best time. And think about a long-term view. You know, we never know what's going on about this business. It could be another COVID-19 in the phase two. We have no idea. But think about a long-term view. How do you think that you could be able to survive um, in the end, uh, you know, with your same business model? Um, if there is, there will be another um, COVID-19 probably in the future. So, um, yeah, I think that's all basically for now that I could share. And I hope that uh, that could be really helpful. Um, if you happen to be a need for counseling about mental health issues, I'm providing a free mental health support and a legal knowledge. I understand that this is only for Indonesians, but you are free to, if you wish to only get some sort of kind of like emotional support, you can always go to bully.id and um, it's stay, it can stay anonymous obviously, and then it's confidential. Uh, we're not asking any details. So feel free to use that platform. And if you probably happen to stay in touch with me, you can also add me on LinkedIn. My name is Agita Pasaribu, and uh, stay in touch and stay healthy. Thank you so much. Good evening, and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi.